What's up nerds, Mike back. In today's video, I'm really excited because this is a topic I've kind of neglected for a while. That is NSX Intrusion Detection and Prevention, also known as IDS IPS. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the things you must know about it, but mostly we're going to get into the actual GUI and play around with it and I'll show you how it's set up. So that said, we have a lot of stuff to cover, so let's jump right into it. So the first thing you need to know about the IDS and IPS functionality inside of NSXT is that it is an add-on license to NSX. So it is a subscription and the license is actually called Distributed Threat Prevention. So you've got to have that license. If you don't, even if you have NSX Enterprise Plus, you will not have IDS IPS. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're at home and you're labbing and you don't have the license, go check out hol.vmware.com. You can get on there and you can play with IDS IPS there. And really, to be honest, there's not a whole lot to it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what you need to know is I, I want to actually hit the whiteboard for this. So the first thing I want to point out, let's say in this case, we have a VM. All right. So with NSX, we should know by then or by now, you know, we have a link coming out of that VM. This is all in the virtual environment, by the way. And somewhere up here, you know, we have, we'll say a virtual distributed switch. All right, so the distributed firewall within NSX, we're forgetting about IDS IPS right now. The way that works is it essentially has a slot coming off of here, kind of a virtual slot, and I'm just gonna draw a really bad firewall. Okay, so that is the distributed firewall within NSXT. Now, the way that IDS IPS works, let me find a good color, there we go, is it adds another slot after the DFW, and this one is IDS IPS. So why am I drawing this out? Why am I explaining it this way? Well, the reason is that when we have traffic leaving the VM, it hits these slots in order. So the first thing it hits is distributed firewall. So what that means is if this flow leaving the VM goes over here to the distributed firewall and it is blocked, we cannot get alerted on that flow from the IDS IPS because the distributed firewall already killed that flow. And I guess the same thing goes true. Let's go back even, you know, go the other way, right? When traffic is coming this way, it's still, even though it's kind of the reverse flow, it still hits the distributed firewall first, and then it hits the IDS IPS. So the same thing is true there. If that flow is killed right there, then the IDS IPS would not detect it or obviously prevent it, which would be fine anyway, because we already stopped it with the distributed firewall. All right, so that's really kind of pointing out the other thing I wanted to say, which is that you have to have the distributed firewall enabled and it has to permit that traffic in order to get the benefit of the IDS IPS. Now, the other thing I'll mention before we jump right into the GUI is that you can do IDS IPS on a VLAN back segment or an overlay segment. So that means if you're using VLAN 20 today for your web servers, you can implement distributed firewalling and IDS IPS and keep VLAN 20 and just run NSX, you know, just kind of layer on the security. So you don't have to re-IP anything if you want to do it that way. All the, obviously it's up to you though. If you want to do the overlay networking, that's perfectly fine. And you can do this with that too. It all works. So that said, let's go ahead and clear this off. All right. So let's flip over into the lab and let's take a look at what this actually looks like. All right. So here we are inside of NSX. Now, I want to point out how I got here. So I'm at the home page right here. Now, all the IDS IPS stuff is under security. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. All right, once you get in here, now the first thing you'll notice right here is it says intrusion detection summary, east-west traffic. It's showing me based, you know, trends based on the severity of the intrusion attempts that it's detected. Now, in this case, it's a lab. I just fired off a bunch of fake intrusion attempts. That's why it's all kind of like right here, top to bottom. But obviously, yours would be kind of spread out. It'll also show you the distribution, the type of attacks that you're seeing within NSX, which is kind of cool. In my case, I'm seeing lots of web app attacks, which makes sense because I did some SQL injection attempts against this system or against one of my protected systems. All right, then finally, I think this is also kind of cool. It shows top VMs. Unfortunately, when it says top VMs here, this is not a category you want to be in the top category. <laughs> this is not something you want to win. You don't want this award. What this means is that there has been a lot of attempts against those VMs in particular, which again, this makes sense because I've been using WebO2A and the DB-Voln VMs as kind of my target or my victim VMs. Okay, that said, that's just kind of a high level overview of IDS IPS. Now, if we wanna actually modify it, set it up, all that, 
we're gonna go under East West Security right here, Distributed IDS IPS. Now, if you don't see Distributed IDS IPS, you're probably on an older version of NSX. I'm running 3.1.2, I believe it is, or .1, I can't remember. Either way, you're gonna need something 3.1 and newer if you want IDS and IPS. All right, so from here, you see the events page, which shows kind of what it looks like once IDS is all set up. So I'm gonna give you a very, very brief overview of that, but mostly I wanna focus on the setup part. So what this is showing me is ultimately intrusion attempts in my environment. Each of these dots represents a different type of intrusion attempt. I wanna be clear about that, a different type. So that means they're grouped together. So let's go look at one, let's see, I don't know what this one is, uh, perfect. Possible MySQL in, uh, information schema access. This was my SQL injection. So I did this and it alerted, I, I got into a database that I control obviously, and it alerted me and told me this right here. Okay, so now see where it says total attempts one. So if I had tried it repeatedly five, 10 times, this would say total attempts five or 10, for example. So it's just one unique type of attack. Now, the other thing, and actually I wanna point out, that's perfect that I mentioned that because the size of those dots also tells you how many attempts there's been. So, you know, you can see that dot is pretty small. There's been one attempt. If we go over here, the red one is pretty large. Look at this, total attempts 60. Now I kicked off an Nmap scan and that's what made this so high. But the point is large circle, bad, small circle, still bad, but not as many. Um, now also the dots themselves, <laughs> Uh, I crack myself up sometimes. Also, another thing worth mentioning is that the dots themselves will do a slow flash or blink when there is an active attack going on at that moment, which is kind of cool. So you talk about minimizing noise, that's a great way. You come in here and if it's flashing, you go after it first because that is a current ongoing attack. Now that said, another thing I didn't mention is that the colors of the dots correlates to the severity of the type of attack. So in this case, red represents critical, orange is high, yellow is medium, and gray, it looks like, is low. So if you wanted to minimize noise even further, you could use this, you could deselect the ones that you don't really care about and kind of minimize some of that you know, uh, busyness happening on the screen. All right, so that's that. Now, uh, the other thing I'll mention here, we can go back the past 14 days right now within NSX if you wanna look at these events. That said, let's go check out the settings. So as far as implementing IDS IPS, how do you implement it? The best way I could tell you is once you're in the GUI, it goes from right to left. I don't know if my hand, I, cause of the camera. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Um, we're gonna click on settings here. Okay, so once you're licensed for IDS IPS, all you have to do is come in here and where it says compute cluster, you're going to check this, this next to it, right? This little toggle. So you enable IDS IPS on a per cluster basis. So once you enable it, then it's basically turned on, but it's not doing anything because you haven't written any rules for it yet. So you can turn it on with no disruption. You can do it in the middle of the day. Production doesn't matter. It's not going to affect anything at all. All right, the next thing that you need to do uh, is ideally update your signatures if you haven't. So you can see in my case, it says a new update is available. I can hit update now if I wanted to. Now I can always hit view and change versions. That will let me see different versions of signatures. So we can see here that I'm on this version. Wow, January 20th, I'm a little outdated. But we can see here that you know there's different versions that I've upgraded over the past. And if I ever wanted to roll back to one, I could select it and then hit save and I could actually roll back to that signature set. So if there's an update that came out and you're getting a lot of false positives, you wanna roll back, you can do that. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can also check this box that says auto update new versions. If you like living dangerously, you can just enable that and then those new signature sets will come and automatically apply. Now, either way, it's up to you. It's, it's really kind of a more of a personal or organizational choice to make, but it is there. Now, as I said, we enabled IDS IPS, but we haven't actually created any rules. So let's talk about that. Now, if we go over to the rules, this will look familiar. If you have seen any of my other videos or if you've played with the NSX distributed firewall, this will look very, very familiar. So we create a policy just like you do in NSX firewall. And I'm gonna go ahead and expand this one. Now I have the policy and I have sources. In this case, I'm saying from anything to anything, destination is any. On any port, services is layer four port, at port here, I didn't specify anything. If it matches all of that, so basically any from any destination or from any source to any destination on any port, then I want to detect only. So that means IDS. So tell me about the intrusion attempt, but don't take any action. 
If I want to change that, I can click this drop down and say detect and prevent. This is where it will obviously tell us about it and it will stop that flow. Now, the one thing I want to mention here is we also have this IDS profile field that I didn't talk about. So what is that? This profile field is essentially saying, if you match all of the criteria in this rule, here are the signatures that you should, or that we will as NSX, evaluate that traffic against. Hopefully that makes sense. So a packet comes through here, it matches any, 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 it matches all of that. Then it will look at this profile, all IDS, and it'll say whatever signatures are in that profile, let's compare this traffic against that. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we can modify that. So if I go into profiles, I'm gonna go into all IDS, that's the profile we were pointing to. Okay, so I have the profile here. Now you can see here, signatures included 13,611 and total 13,611. So basically I'm doing all signatures that NSX knows about, right? Now I can also deselect some as well. I could say, you know what, I'm concerned about latency. So let's just only go with the critical ones. Let's do no high, medium, or low. We'll only do critical. See how it changed? Now it says included 4,426. So we've reduced by, you know, a quarter roughly all of the signatures or a third, either way, all of the signatures that we were going to look at. Now we can also go here and we could say, you know what, uh, let's be a little more specific than this. So I'm going to cancel out of here. Let's look at another rule and I'll show you what I mean by that. So in this case, I have some web servers. I have some uh, Apache web servers and some IIS web servers from Microsoft. Now, I want to protect them, but I don't want to introduce any additional latency or I want to minimize the latency I, I introduce. So how do I do that? Well, with NSX, you can use these profiles to say, I only want to select these very specific IDS profiles or IPS um, signatures rather. So in this case, what I've done is I've said from any source to any of my web servers or any of my VMs in the web group on any port, I could say maybe port 80 instead. Then I want to go ahead and evaluate whatever signatures I have in web dash profile against that traffic. So let's go ahead and take a look at that profile and I'll show you how that works. So here's that profile, web dash profile. If I go to edit, now it looks mostly the same. I've selected all the same severities, but look at this, included 18. So only 18 signatures. So why is that? Well, the answer is right down here. Look, products affected two before it said select. So Let's go ahead and click that and let's see what that says. All right, so we can see here at the top that I've actually selected individual product names. I've said if the signature is for uh, Apache HTTP server or Microsoft IIS, then I want to evaluate traffic against it. So the cool thing about that now is think about that. So all traffic going to my web servers, I'm only going to evaluate 18 signatures or that traffic against 18 signatures Whereas before, in the unoptimized way, I was evaluating 13,611. So obviously that's a big deal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. And we'll go ahead and minimize this. So that's really all it comes down to in terms of the rules. So I'm going back to this rule. Let's take a look at this. Um, the other thing I will mention while we're here is we have the apply to field. Now, if you're familiar with the distributed firewall, it works the exact same way. If you're not familiar with it, I'll explain really quickly. All this field does is say, if you meet all of the criteria in this rule, where should I, you know, where should I program this rule at? On which endpoints or which VMs or workloads, right? So in this case, what I'm saying is I'll only apply this rule to my web servers. If you see DFW, it will apply it to anything connected to an NSX port group, period. So in that case, you know, that's why I had all IDS. So anything in NSX, you know, that's connected to an NSX port group, it's gonna get IDS IPS, right? In the, or in this case, uh, this rule is only IDS, right? But maybe my web servers, I wanna go ahead and, you know what, I'm just gonna do IPS for my web servers, right? Now I could, uh, I could probably optimize this and write this a little bit better because the way I have it, I have an any, any rule at top and then I have a more specific rule at bottom. I probably wouldn't wanna do that, but I just wanted to illustrate the concept. All right, so that's all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. I haven't done something on IDS since I think it was NSX 3.0. So I was definitely overdue. So I hope that you found this useful. Either way, hit the subscribe button because you know what? It doesn't have to be useful to subscribe. You can do me a favor. So that said, I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Until next time, stay nerdy. I know somebody's wondering why I have my phone up against my iPad. Let me show you. If I move my phone and I start drawing, not doing it now. That's what I was looking for.